is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Although China is no latecomer to the African continent, growing exchanges between the two peoples is a new phenomenon. Now, two decades ago, the idea of a Chinese and African marriage was inconceivable. Today, that trend is changing. So how do the cultural differences feature in their relationship? Or are these differences over-exaggerated? Today, we'll be speaking to two Chinese-African couples who will demystify for us what happens when Chinese meet Africans. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to this special edition of Talk Africa. So before we begin our discussion, let's first start by getting to know our China and Africa couples here. With me is Henry and Xu Qing. Xu Qing works at the Confucius Institute. She's a teacher in, uh, at the Chinese Confucius Institute. Henry is also working here in Nairobi. They've been together for over 10 years. They are celebrating yes. their 10th yes. year anniversary and they have a son and a daughter. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank Let me you. also introduce Yasin, Yasin and Ruth. They also live here in Nairobi. They have a daughter. They have been together now for uh, six years. They first met at the Shanghai 2010 Expo, but it was not until uh, two years ago, if I understand it, that they got to know each other. Welcome to the program. Let me start off with you, Henry, uh, you know, having lived here with uh, Xu Qing now for a while in Nairobi, but you stayed in China for quite a while before you came to Kenya. What was your experience in China? What were your expectations? Did it meet your expectations? Well, well um, I can say that um, when I arrived in China in 1998, um, my first experience was to feel illiterate for the first time in my life. Because when I arrived, um, we were going there with a number of students who had good scholarships. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I arrived there, I could not speak Chinese. I could not read Chinese. I could not write Chinese. And I, I could not communicate completely. So um, my first experience was like, how will I survive here? Because I could not speak the language. I remember when I went to the restaurant and um, to have a meal, and I was given a menu in Chinese. And I, everything was in Chinese, so I looked at it. I didn't know what to look for, look, look for, because there were no pictorials. If there were pictures, I would have looked at something familiar. But everything was just in characters. So I just sat there and, until I walked out of the room, because the, the restaurant, because there was nothing I could order. But now you, you speak uh, perfect Mandarin. Yes, after some time, yes, I, I started learning the language. And uh, eventually, I started knowing a few things. And um, of course, with a lot of uh, difficulties. It was the first time when I went to the classroom. I sat there. The teacher was teaching Chinese, and I was just looking at her and wondering what she was saying. I was not getting even a single word. And after 45 minutes, I saw people stood up. The teacher also went out, so I thought maybe we were going to another room. I followed them, and they ended up in their rooms. So I came back and sat there. So it, it was just because uh, in China, after every 45 minutes, you have a short break. But here in Kenya, when you start your class in the morning uh, for three hours, and then you have a break. So it was a bit of a difference for us. Tia Xu Ching's uh, uh, involvement here, what's been your experience now that you're living here in Kenya? OK, so we married in 2006. Then the same year, he just came back to Kenya. And uh, me, I came to Kenya in 2009. So, and uh, I came here to work in the Confucius Institute in the University of Nairobi. The uh, first time they gave me the class, uh, and it, it was a evening class from five to seven. So, uh, I always follow the time, and I came on time to my, to my teaching. So I arrived in the classroom, nobody there. So I was wondering, where are they? So. Later, one student came in, so I asked him. So he was on Kenyan time. Yeah, so <laughs> where, where are the others? So I say, can you message them or can you call them and uh, let them come to the class? We can start to teach. Then he said, yeah, they are coming. Don't worry, teacher. Don't worry. Relax. They are coming. So I wait, I wait. Still not yet. No, not all the students appear in the classroom. So I say, can you call them again, please? It's really late. Then later, 
some they came in, yeah, later, by late, time by time they came in. So now, later you see, uh, for us we realized uh, this uh, kind of maybe time culture for Kenya. So we need to try to uh, just, just it, yeah. All right, uh, Yasin and Ruth, your story. Right. Mm, yeah. <laughs> when we met the first time, we met uh, in Shanghai, and um, the first time we just talked, we got to know each other. And then after that, we, I, I left. Uh, we didn't have any contacts, uh, so it was kind of a per perfect stranger kind of a situation. And then a, a month later in Beijing, we went back to Beijing, and there was this show about um, uh, foreigners coming, going to China to study. It was the 60th anniversary. So we met again. I, I thought he looked very familiar, but I thought I couldn't trace where I'd yeah. met him before. So we just started talking. We just clicked and started talking again, and we started talking about the expo and everything he said he had met a girl from Kenya in Shanghai and all so I got curious and asked him where he was staying <laughs> I was that bold huh? yeah. and he said the name of the of that place we were staying and I was like no wonder you look familiar mm -hmm. so that, the first thing of course was to change exchange contacts yeah. or, or else it will be uh, very regrettable so yeah. from that time the next year the, um, the volunteer that uh, uh, during Valentine's. Yeah, Valentine's, I send him uh, send her the a message. message. Yeah. A message. I say happy uh, Valentine Valentine Day. Day, yeah. Yeah. Then he he she. replied. Yeah. Uh, I replied and said, "Oh, Jackie, thank you. In my heart, you're my Valentine." <laughs> and he said, "Why didn't you tell me? I like you too." <laughs> <laughs> so usually people confuse who told who they like who first. Yeah. You know. And that, that is the question that people are asking because uh, five years ago or even ten years ago, I mean, interracial marriages between China and Africa was not heard of. So we want to find out, though, Henry and Xu Qing, from your parents, you know, and your family and your friends, what did they say when they heard uh, you were getting married or that you were together? I didn't tell my family immediately. Yeah, I'm, I was a bit afraid. Yeah, because in Changchun, that city now, um, especially those years, not many foreign students, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, the students from Africa, yeah, not many people knew them. So I just wait, wait. <laughs> After almost two years, I told, I called my father. I, I want to uh, arrange a, a time to let them meet. So I called my father by phone. I said, ba I said, Baba, <laughs> I, I met a Kenya guy, and uh, he said he liked me. Then my father was suddenly said, no, uh, you must tell him no. I, I was scared and I was so sad and uh, I just kept it like a secret for some time again. So I tried to adjust myself. Then I arranged a time to invite my father came to Changchun mm -hmm. and uh, we were we met in a restaurant. And that time his Chinese improved a lot. So my father, of course, he doesn't speak uh, English, but they talk um, by English. And my father feels so comfortable and they communicate so well. Yeah, so after that, everything is okay. Everything's okay. <laughs> yeah. What about your family back in Kenya? What do they think about your Chinese wife? Yeah, I think one of the things uh, that you find, especially in Kenyans, are more accommodative because Kenya is the origin of mankind. So we feel that any other person out there actually uh, started from Kenya. So my relatives, because uh, I lost my parents a bit early, so they were very accommodated. They didn't have any problem. Uh, they, in fact, they were saying, when are you bringing her? We want to see her. And then after some time, my auntie and uh, my brother came to China, and uh, they were happy. Especially when they met with the, the, my in-laws, they were very happy. Mm -hmm. So um, when I met her father, um, of course, I was very nervous, and uh, we had identified a place where. As a future son-in-law, you yes, have to yes. be nervous. Yes, so I, I, I didn't know what he was going to say, uh, because we had never met. So we, when we went for lunch and uh, we talk, I, I was trying to talk, and I, I didn't know what the, he was going to say. After he finished eating lunch, he, he really enjoyed the lunch. He didn't say anything. He just uh, said he was going. So he said bye, and then I went. I, but it was later on when she told me that he was very happy. Uh, okay. So we, we were happy to receive her because, uh, as I said, we 
Kenyans are more acceptive, uh, receptive of other uh, societies. What about your situation? <laughs> <laughs> so I think for a situation, um, my, my mom, luckily, when, when we met, on, when we got together, she came to China and uh, they got to meet. And I think he gave my mom a very good impression because the first thing he did was at the airport, give her flowers and uh, even called her mom. <laughs> my mom was scared, of course, huh, oh, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, so um, then he had prepared a very good itinerary for her and we, she, he took her around China actually to places that my mom even talks about until this day. So. But at the, at the, uh, in China at that time, my mom was like, well, we'll see. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with him, but time will tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she, I think she accepted it. And she had also been warned by her friends. Uh, you see, your daughter is in China. You bring back a Chinese son in law. <laughs> so, yeah. You have children. What do they speak? What do they eat? I mean, Chinese, African food, what do you eat? What do you eat? What do you, what do you speak at home? <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 uh, we have uh, two children, uh, a son and a daughter. Uh, a son, the son is seven years and is now in China, learning Chinese, with, uh, staying with uh, my mother-in-law, and then the daughter is staying with us here. In our family, we speak Chinese, and we deliberately decided to, that we speak Chinese because we wanted to give them a good background mm -hmm. in, uh, in the language, Chinese. Mm -hmm. So when you come to our home, the language we speak, their first language is Chinese. So later on, they learn English as they go to school and also Kiswahili. Um, when it comes to food, I think uh, she can tell us what, uh, <laughs> because uh, I, I gave her that. Uh, that, that department. Uh, what, what do you yes. eat to eat? OK. So uh, in, in fact, this year, so many friends came from China to visit us. And uh, I always take the, took them to the Kenya restaurant. They eat nyama chama, and uh, they really like it. Uh, because nyama chama in Chinese we say it's kao rou. Yeah, in China we also have this kind of food, almost same, but uh, the cooking, style way uh, yeah, the style different. a bit different. And uh, the, when you need, uh, when you eat uh, nyama chama, you also eat with uh, chumbari. Kachumbari. Kachumbari. Yes. So the kachumbari, yes. you cut yes. the small tomato, onion. Yeah. Yes. Small, those uh, a little pepper, pepper sometimes. Pepper, yeah. Yeah. they mix. Yeah, yeah. yeah this way uh, it's good because it's some chili, chili yeah. inside. And Chinese people they really they like, like uh, chili food, food, spicy food. food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think this is a bit same. And uh, even the Kenya have the Kenya spinach, and China we also have Chinese spinach. spinach. Yeah. And uh, but the cooking way a bit different. Uh, Kenya spinach you cook and you also add some milk. Yeah, so it, uh, it's so healthy, and uh, we like it and soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, that uh, a bit same. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, other food, uh, I, I think the ugali yeah, is also nice. Uh, I sometimes we also eat, we also introduce yeah, yeah. it to our Chinese friend yeah. because you know Chinese friend, Chinese people nowadays, they also go back to uh, our some days back mm -hmm. because they see uh, the maize. It's really a, it's a healthy yeah, thing yeah. Yeah, for your body. Yeah, yeah. So now our people, even our old, old parents, mm -hmm. uh, those gen that generation, they like to eat yeah. maize food. Maize, yeah. yeah, so in fact, Kenya food is very healthy. Right. Yeah. So we're going to uh, stay here for a moment and take a short break. And when we return, we will continue our discussion with the African and Chinese couples, Henry and Xu Qing, and Yasin and Ruth, to stay with us. Welcome back to the program. Now we continue our conversation on our diverse cultures. I want to find out from you uh, as a group, though, what kind of, what sort of similarities do you find in the two cultures, in the African and in the Chinese culture, whether it comes to uh, the way you relate to your family, your, your parents, uh, your, your values? What similarities do you find? 
Start with Ruth. Yeah, I think uh, for us, uh, the, 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 the thought of family, having family close by, you know, your nuclear family, the mom, the dad, and the kids, is almost similar to China because it's very important for this nuclear family to be very uh, peaceful and be very balanced, you know? So that is one thing that I've found. They instill of values uh, towards, uh, on their kids and towards the society. It all starts from the family and it's the same Africa and China is all the same. Mm -hmm. That I think we have in, in common. Yeah. Chu uh, Jing? I think uh, Kenya, the family relationship almost, almost same like Chinese relationship. You see in China, we have the Chinese Spring Festival. And it's very important for Chinese people to celebrate it. And in Kenya, you celebrated Christmas. So, and uh, your people must prepare yourself nicely and uh, so many different foods food nicely and uh, gather together and uh, guo guo shou shou yeah you celebrate it together and in china the chinese spring festival every family member must go back to your hometown your home gather together buy the gift and uh, enjoy the food together especially chinese special food is dumpling and it was so delicious yeah, so this I think is uh, is the same, almost same, because family is so important. Yeah, everyone is busy. Yeah, because you are the one of the member member of the family. You are busy for your work the whole year. So at last, you need to go back to your hometown to celebrate your success in something. Yeah, Henry. I, I think what she mentioned is very important uh, because, like when I was in China, when uh, when we break for Spring Festival, you can't get a, a ticket. The yeah, train is full. It's so hard. I remember when I went to visit my friend, we used the, I think it was a train which was just uh, put on the road to take care of the excess, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, passengers. Mm -hmm. So going to visit the family is very important. Being with the family, that getting together is very important. I think the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, you find that um, in China, there's this thing of you have. Um, I don't know how to, I would say it in, in Chinese, we say so ren. So ren, to be yeah. a person. Yeah. It means you value yourself. So one of the things I notice in China is uh, I can borrow something from you, maybe it's money. We might not have an agreement written, but I am obliged to pay that debt. Uh, also here in, uh, in, in Kenya, we, many communities, they have this kind of thing. Uh, people borrow things, you, ha you apply to return it. And one of the things I noted also is like, if I am unable to pay, also my children um, should try to pay that debt. So which I found that is something about valuing yourself, that uh, yes, I have to fulfill my, my, my obligations. Whatever I promise, I have to fulfill. So I find some kind of similarities here. Uh, between Ch Chinese and, and, and Africans, specifically Kenyans. So Henry and uh, Yasin, both of you do some business here in Kenya and, and you've also been uh, doing that or you have that experience as well in China. So I want to find out from you the differences in the business culture between China and Africa. Yeah, I think... All uh, the similarities, if they are. Yes. Have. Well, um, of course, the uh, similarities is uh, everybody expects some profit at the end of the day. And uh, the only difference I notice is uh, maybe the work, the working habit. You find that uh, in China, um, of course, the uh, time is of essence, and uh, when we agree on a time, we have to meet on that time. But um, so, uh, so you'll find that, uh, uh, and then also the other thing is the cost of living. When you are in China, the cost of uh, doing business is slightly lower than uh, here in 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 Kenya. So you'll find that when you compare some of the salaries, uh, there could be some variations between the two countries. So I remember when I came back to China, it took me some time to really adjust to buying things because I would find them very expensive. So, so, so you'll get maybe, uh, when you're doing business, you'll, you, if you're working, coming from China, you might wonder why the salaries are a bit higher here. So you might want to give some salaries which uh, maybe, uh, I mean, the locals might feel like you're not uh, paying well. But it's because of uh, coming from the two, the two different uh, environments where the, the cost of doing business is slightly 
uh, lower in, uh, in China, but here it's uh, slightly higher. So uh, maybe the same, if, if I pay you 15,000 shillings in China and I pay you here, uh, there could be some variation in terms of what you can be able to meet. But uh, when you look at China now, the cost of uh, living has gone up. Mm -hmm. so yes, uh, Business in Africa now is uh, up than okay. before. Yeah, yeah of, uh, the Kenya is uh, the business country. country. Yeah, when I come to here, I saw you. The Kenya is very uh, fast, everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nairobi is very busy. Yeah. The cars, the people, wow. Oh, this, this, this people mm -hmm. is very hard. Mm -hmm. Industrious. We like Chinese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chinese in China, they, they hard work hard. This is, I found, oh, this is the same. The business uh, in uh, China is a little different. If you want to buy something from a factory, OK, you need to pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, OK, maybe you can, oh, next month. You deposit. You deposit, 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 deposit. poly, poly. <laughs> uh, but I, I found that uh, many things is the same because we learn each other. Mm -hmm. Now China uh, between Africa, be, between Kenya, no. Mm, more and more time do business. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a good pattern. Uh, it's a good friend. Yes. So I, I, I want. I think it's next time we do more business together. Mm -hmm. So Yasin and Ruth, you've been together now six years. Yeah. Well, Ruth, uh, sorry, Henry and uh, Xu Ting, you've been together over ten years. So I want to find out from you, Ruth, how has marrying into the Chinese culture or marrying a Chinese person? How has that changed you? I think it's made me a much clever person because uh, marrying into uh, to another country, to another nationality is like marrying the culture as well because you have to understand the other person's culture and uh, the way they were brought up, the way they have grown, the way they, they think and do things and why they do that. So it's made me want to tap more into the Chinese culture, immerse myself into the culture so that I can understand him a little more better to avoid conflicts between us. So I think it's made me a wit, uh, much witter and much clever uh, than before. It's made me uh, see things in another whole perspective because I can think outside the box. I can be able to think uh, almost, not the same, but almost like a Chinese person would do regarding to the relationship and what I should say and how I should say it so that he cannot feel like I'm trying to pressure him or I'm trying to make so much differences between us. Yes, in. When I read the Ruth together, um, I changed my life <laughs> because I I I, I feel, feeling uh, open eyes, uh -huh. open my man, man, mind. mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also in Beijing we together, I, he gave me the different uh, the life. Uh, of course, now we uh, stay in Kenya, life in Kenya, so it's uh, very different in uh, yeah, China Beijing, yeah. than before. Mm -hmm. Um, my life is international now. <laughs> Every uh, Chinese uh, friend uh, uh, like uh, like my life. Mm. Wow, you admire. Oh yeah, you you outside to Africa, live there. It's very good. Oh, xian mu ha. They are envious, <laughs> envious of his life here yeah, now. Yes. <laughs> so I think mm, this is uh, right. This is uh, right. Shooting. Yeah. So. What I want to say, I feel I'm really lucky to marry Henry. Yeah, he brought me here. And uh, of course, uh, we have some challenges, like uh, homesick. But uh, that uh, point is a uh, small case because he really support me. Every time I miss home, I can arrange my time, then go back to visit my family. Yeah, and uh, I also learn a lot from him. And he's uh, so gentle and uh, so Cool. So I mean, I, I'm a person who came from China, north of China, and uh, we do things is really hurry and quick. So, but uh, now we learn each other from um, from. I learn so many things from him, and so many things he will come to me. He say no, hakuna matata. hakuna matata, no problem. <laughs> Everything will be okay. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Yeah, this is your home. So I see uh, this is good. Uh, it's good for my health, and it's also good for my whole family. Yeah, because I'm a mom. Yeah. Uh, Henry. Yes, I, I think um, uh, marrying her has changed me a lot. Uh, specifically because, for one, uh, she mentioned about Akuna Matata. Of course, they, before I was this kind of person who there's something to be done, I think I can even do it tomorrow. 
but for her, she wants it done now. Mm -hmm. So I've actually learned to do things uh, instantly. And uh, so sometimes I, I found I've achieved a lot of things because I don't procrastinate things. I don't say wait until tomorrow, wait later, I do it right away. And then the other thing that uh, has really helped me is, uh, you see, before you do anything, you have to think about the impact on the other person. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of the things I do, I always put myself in her shoes and ask myself, what would she want me to do? So uh, I'm sure it has changed me because now I always think about the impact on the other person. And also, also look at how will the community look at her. So I always put herself, uh, myself in her shoes before I make certain decisions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then lastly, I also, well, I've decided to let her make most of, uh, most of the decisions and I do the most important. <laughs> o of which I have not done <laughs> since we married. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, when uh, Xu Jin talked like that, when the, uh, Henry gave, gave her the more power, mm, I feel it's the same. You know, in China, we, we worried many things. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Ruth uh, talked like uh, Henry talked to me, um, don't worry. We together, we are two people together. No, pro yeah, no problem, Hakuna <laughs> Matata, yeah. no problem. Yeah. You give, give me more uh, power, more, yeah. Yeah. more relief. Yeah. A little bit so relief. I think uh, we're not married, uh, um, we're not only married for love, we, because this is a na natural, natural, natural mm -hmm. the scene, Xianghu the scene. Not natural. It's, it's a natural attractiveness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 natural attractiveness. Yeah. All right. So I know uh, Yasin and Ruth that you you're a music duo. Yeah. And you have uh, a group called China Africa Flamengo group. Yes. 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 We want to hear you sing. What oh. is the group about? <laughs> and what are you going to sing? And what yeah. are you going to say? Uh, we uh, yes, we are China Africa Flamingo group, and uh, we have our own uh, composition, in which he wrote the song, the words to the song, and uh, for me uh, to sing, and his friend uh, gave us the instrumentals, and it's called Chungwa Wadejia, China My Home. Yeah, it's all, it, it has both China and Africa, so you can sing a little bit. Yes, please. Okay, okay. So it goes like this. 在那遥远的东方有个美丽的地方 Fejotong 中国我的家，成就梦中的理想。中国我的家，幸福地久和天长。Hey, oh, very nice. Thank, very you. nice. Thank you, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there for today. But it's been very insightful. Henry, uh, Hugh Jing, Yasin, and Ruth. Thank you very much for joining us on Talk Africa thank today. You. And that's all we have time for this week on the program. Thank you very much for joining us here on Talk Africa from me, Beatrice Marshall. Goodbye.